Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Boz, and I am live here at Metabolic Health Summit in uh, Long Beach, California. I tried really hard to do a post yesterday, but kept getting interrupted. So I'm here today to just do some updates from yesterday's lectures and then talk a little bit about what happened this morning. Yesterday was one, one of my favorite sections, uh, which has to do with ketones and cancer. If you've read my book, Any Way You Can, it is, it's a love letter to my mom who was suffering with cancer and about a month before I, that story began, I had found out about the ketogenic diet. I was learning about how to quickly repair brains in my clinic and through the education I was doing for my patients, it ended up saving my mother's life. So that story was, is a collection of the notes that I took and the story that was happening as I continued to learn as much as I possibly could about, the, about uh, ketones and cancer. So yesterday, two of my heroes gave lectures um, and one of them was Adrian, Trek, Adrian Sheck. Uh, she is a um, researcher and scientist that <clears throat> has just been a big, um, big part of my education. She, uh, doesn't know that, and I've, I've shaken her hand a couple of times, but you know, she was at the first uh, Metabolic Health Summit that I was at in Florida two years ago when I was trying to make sure that all the stuff I was reading was real. And I think what inspired me about Adrienne Sheck is that she has students from high school in her lab, and her teaching and her guidance and her ability to take teenagers who aren't uh, yeah, that, that's hard to teach them, uh, to bring them into an advanced lab and say, no, don't mess up our research, but I want you to experience what it's like to be in the world of science. And just that is so inspiring to me that that is like a kindred spirit. But she gave a lecture um, about what she's learned in her lab, where she takes animal studies, uh, she induces cancer, and then she uses different strategies to try and repair those cancers. So a couple things that was very, it was really fun just to hear it again, I've heard part of her lectures before, but just how much those cancers have, um, have their, they're not very smart. They can't use a ketone to fuel themselves. And when you're, when you give them an abundance of glucose, boy, that uh, makes it easier for them to live. Um, but also, she was studying some pretty gnarly cancers, some of the most deadly cancers, um, which are glioblastoma, brain cancers. The other thing that she did a great job of talking about is, I have said this myself and I kind of fall into that trap where saying we're just going to starve the cancer by not giving it sugar. And although that's really important, what she reminded us of is there's so much more to how that cancer survives, how it outsmarts those. Uh, when, when the glucose is low, it will find another fuel source and that there are multiple stresses that we could put on that cancer that will really help it. You know, one of those has been the hyperbaric oxygen by by increasing that oxygen free radicals. If your cells are healthy, they will adapt. They will not be sabotaged to those oxygen free radicals. But if you put your cells under hyperbaric oxygen and those free radicals are exposed to a cancer cell, man, is it amazing how many of those cells die. Uh, so she also went through how that cancer is, um, you know, it's not just that it's a genetic disease, it's not just that it's a metabolic disease, it's not just that it's nutrition, it's all of them combined as one. And I just find that, um, you know, I've, I've fallen into the trap of saying, let's starve the cancer by lowering the sugar. I know I've said that. And sometimes that's the simplest thing a patient can hear at the time. But um, what she did was, again, remind me, I'm teaching thousands and she's teaching me, uh, that when you say that, be careful. There's more to it than just the sugar. Checking your blood sugars is really important. Making sure that Dr. Ba's ratio is low by having low blood sugars and high ketones. Really powerful how that was reinforced in several of these, knowing that insulin is a growth factor. And what that Dr. Boz ratio is doing is it is predicting insulin. We want insulin to be low, to be a growth factor. And that, that power it doesn't have any, um, uh, any place to stand on when that insulin is low and that sugar is low and then those ketones are high. Flexible, healthy, non-cancerous cells can thrive. If you add oxygen on uh, hyperbaric oxygen, pressurized oxygen, they go inside the hyperbaric chambers while on a ketogenic diet. We had a couple of uh, 
of uh, clinicians say that one of the most powerful things they do for their cancer patients is they, they actually even supplement with those exogenous ketones right before putting them in the hyperbaric chamber in hopes to guarantee that they have the best chance of stressing those cancer cells to, to go into apoptosis or cell death and to improve uh, the likelihood that a flexible cell can really respond to those cancer to those environments of low sugar high ketones and then that pressurized oxygen so you know for those of you that know my mom grandma rose is the is the target of that story and for a while we had talked about hyperbaric oxygen and hadn't done much about it we live in South Dakota there wasn't a chamber around but just uh, two weeks ago um, she had she started hyperbaric oxygen because of the cancer that's moved into her eye and um, I mean it's the cancer cells in her eye that are causing her to not see as well and she's been using a hyperbaric chamber actually in her home uh, kind of like the star athletes do after they repair from a from a you know football game or a basketball game they use hyperbaric oxygen to try and repair tissue quicker uh, grandma rose is using it uh, several days a week to, to enhance her ketogenic state and uh, see if we can push that cancer further away from the edge of her story as well. Um, let's just see. Okay, other people that spoke yesterday. So Adrian Sheck, I could talk about forever. She's one of my heroes. Um, but then uh, Thomas Seafried, who again he helped me write my book in a way that I used his book to learn more about how to think about that metabolic cancer. And you know, when when you look at fermentation versus um, oxidate, oxidate, oxygenation oxidization, sorry. <laughs> when you oxidize uh, uh, your energy versus ferment for energy, this is a huge separator between cancerous cells and healthy cells. And he went through looking at other strategies when we've seen cancer cells outsmart the ketogenic diet. What do we do next? And when we add layers on top of that, looking at really making metabolism difficult for those cancer cells, 100% of the cancer cells died in when we double stressed that. That's just an incredible incredible process of giving hope to people with a ketogenic with cancer to say if you push those ketones we want them higher we want that glucose lower and then if that's not working don't give up there is so much more out there that we can do to help uh, give you the power uh, to let modern medicine do its job to let immunotherapy do its job but give you the power of changing your diet to make this an environment that doesn't allow cancer cells um, you know, after the uh, lectures, there was after those lectures, there was actually one very interesting lecture from a veterinarian. I'm not going to remember his name right, right now, and my my notes just died again. So, but anyway, listening to a veterinarian and how he sets up his uh, protocols for his patients, which are pets with cancer, and you know they're using the same chemotherapy drugs that we do, and to watch how strategic he was in getting those sugars lower, making sure they're on a strict ketogenic diet, and then the flourishing of the patient uh, to the best of their ability, putting the animals in hyperbaric oxygen while on a ketogenic diet, and watching how many of his pets and his patients recovered from their cancer thanks to the metabolic therapy combined with uh, traditional therapy. Um, it, uh, the last uh, speaker of the day for the cancer part was a father who it was very, very kindred to hear, you know, he was uh, part of a research team that was studying the ketogenic diet and, um, no, excuse me, he was part of a research team that was studying um, glioblastoma. And about the time he kind of solidified the deal that that was the contract he was working on, um, his 13-year-old son was diagnosed with cancer of a glioblastoma. And what a heart-touching story about um, the resources that he just went to PubMed and he started reading, how can I help my son? How can I help my son? And, um, you know, the, the lectures from yesterday, the guy who is uh, one of the leading uh, physicians, Dr. Rowe, uh, was in his community. And he, you know, by the grace of God, ended up in that uh, in that medical clinic where Dr. Rowe was the advisor. He gets all the way in front of Dr. Rowe and didn't know that he was the co-author for the paper that he'd been studying. He just knew that this paper said, if my son has a glioblastoma, everybody says that the best chance he has is 12 months. And 
His son is now 18 years old, on a mission for his faith, and is living his life to the fullest. And it was so inspiring to watch the father say, I've, I'm heartbroken, I don't know what to do. And I turned to science, which was on the internet. I mean, it sounds like a terrible place to go. I'm a physician and I've had lots of people bring in crazy things off the internet. But he was able to go and find the science in PubMed and find these teachers. And by the grace of God, one of the teachers was in his community. He ended up in that clinic and they walked his son back away from the edge of death using hyperbaric oxygen, a ketogenic diet, and modern medicine to help that boy go from 13 to a full life um, and a scans that continue to have uh, no, no return of his glioblastoma. That's amazing. Anyway, the cancer stories yesterday were incredible. I hope to do several videos on these going forward, but I think it's really powerful to give you a glimpse of what it is that I've learned and to just you know, try to capture the excitement of how powerful it is to say, you know, I've been lecturing on cancer and helping my patients think about this for the better part of three years. And it's these moments where you get to hear from the leaders that reinforce my voice and the strength to continue to say, I know it sounds counterculture that taking away sugar would have anything to do with your cancer, but it's a really powerful answer and there's science behind that. So anyway, I want to thank you for tuning in. Thanks for those who put in questions. I'll take a look at those in the next section. I am continuing to tweet out, uh, actually Instagram out. I go, is that have a verb? Uh, uh, the, some of my favorite slides and some of my favorite parts of a lecture. So if you haven't followed me on Instagram, it's um, Dr. Boz underscore Annette Bosworth is my Instagram handle. And then um, for those of you that haven't uh, checked out my book, I do have it on sale for 99 cents on Kindle this week, and kind of as a way to say, you know what, uh, this is about spreading the information. How can we get this to more people? Uh, so if you want to check out any way you can on Kindle, on Amazon, I'm happy to do my part. All right, signing off is Dr. Boz. I'll be back with cardiology and ketones.